the main challenge it was how we can scale a microenvironment that is has is so highly controlled and it's known for being used in, in for example in lab on a chip on organs on a chip mm -hmm. so really small devices that allow you to create the conditions to make studies Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm really excited because we just finished up Indie Bio Demo Day. We didn't get a chance to sit down with a couple of the companies, so we brought them into studio to be able to explain what they're building and why it's important. With us, we have STEM, STEM Bio, and we have both Shusho and Fred Federico joining us, the co-founders and cousins of STEM. <laughs> Thank you, you for coming that. onto the show. I did not know. I did not know that. <laughs> I didn't. When you uh, make sure you bring the, the mic up mm. if you're going to speak. Um, just like now, to tell me about this journey because your cousins, you started a biotech company. You're from Argentina, yes. Argentina. And so, how did this happen? Where, where did, what were your careers that led you up to making this? Well, we know each other since we were born, basically. But what brought us to start this company actually was beer and our grandfather. So our grandfather taught us how to brew beer when we were really young. And we saw an opportunity on creating a business out of selling beer. And we started working with, by starting to offer our product. We saw that there was also a vacancy on the providers of yeast for brewers. So I was studying uh, agricultural engineer at the university at that moment and focusing on bioprocessing and, and biomanufacturing. So I saw the opportunity of us being the ones that brew that beer, that, that yeast, right? So we started the, the company as yeast manufacturers for brewers in Argentina. And we built, uh, we, we designed a facility that to, to do that yeast. And we soon found out that it was really expensive to do so. And even though we know how to brew yeast for the last 100 years, there was no one in our country that was doing so. And it wasn't because they didn't know how to brew yeast, but they didn't have access to the tools. Yep. And that would, that, that would cause that we didn't have any supplier for that product specifically. So we focus on trying to solve that problem by making linear infrastructure for doing biotech. Mm -hmm. And that was the first pilot that we got. We built a, a small biotech facility to offer yeast for brewers. Yes. But even when we did that, we shrink the cost of that facility by 50x. Wow, by wow, 50x yeah. Yeah. Yes. shrinking the manufacturing yeah. footprint of yeah. the facility for yeast. Yes, and reducing, wow. the, reducing the team and making it more uh, dynamic to production so you can offer different kind of strains and work with a more a custom, customizable orders for clients. Yes. Uh, but even when we got there, we saw that there was this constraint regarding scaling of that kind of uh, approaches mm -hmm. and also gathering the team that it was necessary. So it's a really delicate process. And if someone make a mistake by, by day five, they will ruin a week worth of work of the whole team. So once again, uh, at that time, we got a little more of uh, recognition from the ecosystem, and we start to being reached out by other industries saying that they had the same problem. So at that point, we oh, interesting for applications that are not yeast. Yeah, exactly. That is what we're actually, you know, things started to become very interesting uh, because it opened a, a new world of possibilities for us. Yeah. It's like when you find the, the pain. You know, that we, we, we are told many, many times to find a pain and then you have a, a, a business. It's like we found a very, very big pain because we are going through this uh, renaissance of biotech, right? And many, many uh, startups, what is happening right now, they have these brilliant ideas that they come up with, but they find out very quickly that the strains that they are developing, they, you know, sales behave 
on one way when when you are in the lab in a very very small scale but when you take those cells to a big bioreactor well things are very very different and and companies are suffering that way many many of them actually don't make it through the through the second year so usually maybe they 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 have this amazing idea they go through a seed round and they are not able to take it to the market and oh well you, you can I, I will i will pass the microphone to shusho yeah yes and basically there is this knowledge that cannot be tapped in order to solve big problems mainly because we don't have the tools to make it happen so that's what we recognize that there was this a really big pool of knowledge about how to uh, implement the technology as biology as a technology uh, and there's there's a really big communities that understand how to do that very accurately but then there is all of this knowledge that has to do to actually uh, scale that translate that knowledge to a product and make it to actually have a, a real impact so there's a lot of new tools that you have to acquire really fast in order for your uh, venture to be uh, successful. All right. So I got where you were at with grandfather mm -hmm. and that being a crucial part of learning how to manufacture yeast and then starting to see these bigger facilities and being like, why can't this be done in smaller facilities? Mm -hmm. And also the, the dream is to make this very plug and play and very small manufacturing of whatever biomolecules you, you want. And okay, so the technology is microfluidics and robotics. I want to talk about that as well. Um, so let's, let's go with a little, just a little bit more on where was the, where was the moment for you when you were in Argentina in these in figuring out how did you bring the cost down 50x or the 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 footprint the size down 50x yes we basically we achieved that by reducing the 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 size of the facility and basically integrating technologies that were off the shelf so it was an integration of available technologies and trying to come up with a dynamic of work that would allow us to make it uh, more efficient, right? But we saw that that, was, that wasn't enough. We needed to develop novel technologies that would uh, integrate, the, it, it will solve these problems by the root. So something that was always really anti-intuitive for me is the way that we control sail behavior in, within bar reactors. So we have these propellers and it's tool, extreme turbulent flows to enable the gas exchange and the mass exchange required for the cells to, to metabolize and to deliver the product that we want them to. But as I told you before, I was studying agricultural engineering and I was particularly studying how microorganisms interact with plants. Mm -hmm. And you can find that within, the pl within plants there are plenty of bacteria that are living within the phloems and xylems of plants. And that growth and that interaction and that delivery of molecules happens in laminar flow. And it was really interesting because... Laminar yeah. flow. And yes. what is that? So it's a, it's a regime of liquid, fluid, yeah, yeah, that is really slow velocities. And you have this, um, these vectors of velocities of, of the flow that are really predictable. Mm. And, they and move that's it. microfluidics. Yes. So if you can have a predictable sort of flow Yes. Then that can make processes much easier. And more predictable and more tunable. Exactly. So yeah. the, the, the main challenge, it was how we can scale a microenvironment that is, has, is so highly controlled and it's known for being used, in, in, for example, in lab on a chip, so on organs on a chip, mm -hmm. so really small devices that allow you to create the conditions to make studies. But we saw an opportunity in that technology to be used for biomanufacturing, to be yes. used in the industry. And the first thing that we saw is that we needed to find a way to scale those microchannels in a way that make them compatible 
to how the industry requires products to be manufactured. And interesting. So, mm-hmm. where did the come? Where did the transition come from mm-hmm. from the yeast for mm-hmm. brewing mm-hmm. to the microfluidics? How did that mm-hmm. happen? It happened because we found a problem that was compelling enough for us to to shift our our, our direction, right? When because there's no microfluidics for yeast. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. In for bar reactors, th- there are yeast that will be in microfluidic devices, but there is no biomanufacturing process that uses microfluidics as the way of growing cells and manufacturing products. Okay, and that's where you come in yes. as the first. Be- because this is a technology that is trying to solve the problem that we always wanted to solve. It's like we started by saying there is no suppliers of yeast in Argentina, and that's because there are not <clears throat> proper tools. And by doing that, we learned that that was a problem that happened across every industry that used microorganisms to manufacture molecules. So we see these... Microorganisms sh- manufacturing molecules. Hmm. Interesting. So that was a, a problem that was across all the industries. And you're talking about the microfluidics inside of the microorganism. We, we are talking about the microfluidics that provide the microorganisms, the environment, the environment. That, yeah, that is better suited for that intended reaction intended to happen. Intended reaction to happen, yeah, mm-hmm. okay. So then your microfluidics help the microorganisms environment mm-hmm. make it have an end process that yeah. you want it mm-hmm. to have, which is making a specific biomolecule. Mm-hmm. And the first one was yeast that you were making. Yes, then we work with bacteria. And how much yeast have you made with this process? Well, in Argentina, um, with this process, it's new because we, we have been working in the bioprocessor. That's how we call the machine that unites all these technologies together for the last 18 months, 20 months, right? It's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it, happened, it happened so fast, but um, the project of selling yeast in Argentina is longer than that. We, we have provided yeast for brewers for a long time. Uh, and we have done tests of productivity per hour. And that that's a way of saying how much product can we get, can we get from, a, the, from a volume size of a bioreactor every hour, mm-hmm. right? So that's how you measure uh, productivity in, in yep. process. And we found that our microbioreactors are really efficient in that way of comparing to other technologies. Gotcha. Uh, during Indivio, we work with E. coli, we work with CHO cells, um, and we measure unprecedented increases in productivity that go from 70x to 100x uh, of increase in productivity per hour. So, How much is growing in the bioreactor per hour? So now we're working with um, a units that are 10 milliliters, and so you will get, uh, for example, for bacteria, you will get 10 milliliters every hour, but the content of protein or the content of the end product uh, is considerably higher as well. So we have found around 3x in titers of the protein, that's the concentration of the protein in, in over the volume, and then the throughput that, that we can achieve is a re- we are changing the whole volume of a bar reactor every hour. And that in, in current technologies, it would be around 24 hours, 72 hours, in some cases, 14 days. So that's a part of the, of the benefit of being able to know where every cell is going to be at every time. So in that way, you can, you can correct the microenvironment as the cell requires. Okay, okay. So then the, the micro environment is, has microfluidics mm-hmm. and, you, the in, and what are the variables that you change in the micro environment? The temperature, mm-hmm. what are these variables? All right, so the main two would be the availability of gas molecules and uh, the, availability, the availability of, of feed, right? For the, for the microorganism to metabolize. Okay, so but so gas and feed, and then is gas pressure? Is that what that is, or what do you mean gas? Yeah, it's like dissolved 
dissolve gases, like dissolve oxygen oh. within the media. So you're, you're, you're changing the composition of the gases inside mm -hmm. of where the cell is. Exactly. And then the other one is you're changing the feed that the mm -hmm. cell is getting. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the concentration of feed available surrounding the cell. And we, we can do that really accurately. Then by doing that, you can also control temperature and control pH because as you have uh, a gas phase that is interacting with the cell, with the microbe, and then you are adding also liquid, that is the media, you have means to control the temperature and control the pH as the cell transforms the environment, right? As they are metabolizing that media, they are producing heat, they are changing the pH. Oh, so then you mm -hmm. need, oh, interesting, so mm -hmm. the the microorganism in the, is causing the microenvironment to change yes. over time, and then you have to adjust the microenvironment. Yes. And that's how you can get a continuous production mm -hmm. of your desired biomolecule. Yes. Exactly. We can. This, this is what we call cool flow. Cool flow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's cool, right? Because you keep um, you keep the microorganism in flow of the desired process. Yeah, we we call it cool flow because it is cool what we've done, and because it is uh, C U L, which is continuous, unidirectional, and laminar flow. Ah, got it. So, to put it in to, C U L, cool flow, cool yeah. flow. Continuous unidil, unil, unidirectional, unidirectional laminar, laminar, flow. laminar flow. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That is, yeah, and that is actually a very good, uh, very good thing to remind to uh, understand it. Yeah. Continuous unidirectional exactly. laminar. But that's a good acronym. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we were doing. We thought about saying uh, the, the Luke, the L U C, but L-U-C. they say who who who, who is remember? Luke. Who's Luke? Cool. No, yeah, yeah, no one is, no one is named Luke in the yeah. company, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Let's go with cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but if you if you compare it to uh, the the traditional way of um, scaling up and growing uh, microorganisms, which is turbulent flow, right? The, the bioreactors. Think about uh, the traditional bioreactor. It is like like Shusha said in the in the presentation, right? In the day, is we are putting these precious microorganisms, these factories inside a blender. Yeah, inside a blender. Right? Yeah, instead With of propellers. a controlled environment. So try to imagine being a cell. <laughs> trying to find yeah, trying to find food, trying to breathe. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you are going through sheer forces. Yeah. In this system uh, that we developed, there's no such thing so it's actually like many we we said many many times it's a spa for it's a for spa a cell. yeah it enables them to but relax are, and do the one process exactly. that you want them they're, to do they are treated very very well they're treated very well. they have food availability <laughs> at all times so this is this is the spa for a cell. Yeah, and i think that the key element of that is what happens when you um, design around the cell instead of putting the cell into a vessel and trying to control what happens. So the exercise that we went through is that exactly. It's how it's like to be a cell within a bioreactor. Yeah. Right? And how, how can we improve that? How can we provide more tools for the users also? You know? Because sometimes you need cells to divide and then sometimes you need them to work then you need them to manufacture proteins. Yes. So you communicate that yeah. in different ways. And you, can, you get, can you get the environment to enable the cell to only divide or to only manufacture proteins? Can you, can you get it to do yeah. just one we, of those processes? We have, the, we have the capabilities of interacting in different stages. As we know, he said unidirectional. So that's important because that means that if the cell is here now, eventually it's going to be in, in another place and you can know when, when it's going to happen. So basically you can design a, a process to say, I want the cell to divide for this amount of time. That is going to be the time that it's going to take that cell to go from here to here. And then when it has arrived here, I don't want them to divide anymore. I want to induce the synthesis of protein. 
and I want to induce that synthesis for this amount of time. Oh, interesting, because then you can you dynamically change the mm -hmm. microenvironment yes. for the cell. Oh, that's great. That's great. So now, what in terms of in terms of sizing, uh, ideally down the line, yes, very very small. Where is it at right now? Like the size of a table? How where is it at? So we we did a presentation the other day, the other yep. day and we presented one of the modules that we are using our microbioreactors. It has an equivalent throughput to a one liter bioreactor in turbulent flow. So they are this size. Maybe I can send you the picture and you can share it after us. But um, that's uh, around, now we are in 100x of smaller sizes uh, when it comes to the, the size of the bioreactor. Do, but you guys, do you guys have it on the, on the? Here, in, in, the, in the website, no, we haven't up, updated yet. No, it wasn't on the, it is not yet on the website because of the IP strategy that we oh, were dealing yeah, with yeah, uh, like point. two two or three weeks ago, but we go, we're going to get it. And so, yeah. so, so this, you could say a microbioreactor. Mm. So then the strategy then, I have a couple thoughts. Mm. The strategy then is to get that to as many uh, people that want to make their own biomolecules as possible. Uh, and then have them make what, what they want. What are you seeing that people want to make with them? Like what's the number mm -hmm. one or number two? Okay, yeah. applications. Yeah. So I think that there are a real necessity in the industry for tools that allow companies to have more predictable manufacturing facilities and cheaper ones also, or low, a lower cost. Because now that's pro prohibited. They, they allow them. Not, it doesn't allow them to to get there to get to the to the market. Um, but when we say mic we say microbioreactors because they control the microenvironment, not because they are small, right? So that's ah, cool, so cool. It, it's a, even they are small. Oh, interesting. They 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 have this repeatability of the microenvironment that is something that you cannot ask for a traditional bioreactor on turbulent flow as you scale. Every time you use larger vessels, you have to retune the, the process in order to correct for that changes of the uh, design and the physical uh, behavior that happened within the bioreactor. Well, when we say microbioreactors, it's because that microenvironment, it can be always the same, regardless you are working in a one liter microbioreactor or a 10,000 liter microbioreactor. So that's the, the key uh, breakthrough here is that if someone has developed a process let's say in a really a really big corporation has developed a process in a 10,000 liter microbioreactor someone can replicate that process in a 100 milliliter scale hmm. and yeah generally trying to achieve the same results and that will happen so Interesting because so the so again microbioreactor means the climate that you're mm. controlling inside the environment mm. the environment you're controlling inside so that way mm. if you're doing a hundred microliters mm. all or a mm. thou, ten thousand liters mm. that you can control the environments that the mm. mi the microorganisms are growing inside of mm. um, interesting so that's how it can be replicated out of these yeah. scales mm. and and that creates so are you are you how are you so then how would you get a you know how would your micro bioreactor uh, you know how would it attach onto a you know a 10,000 liter one versus mm. 100 would you sell the whole mm. 100 microliter one would you sell just an attachment for the big mm. one you know how would yeah, that yeah and i think that that's the uh, one of the challenge that, that, that we that we need to solve in the, in the near future to understand really how customers are are willing to acquire this value that we are generating, right? So we have plenty of conversation with customers that they understand because they, they have to release new molecules to the market and they know that for every molecule that they have to release, they have to build an entire new facility. So this is solving a, oh, a, wow. a, a big problem even for big companies. When you put it that way, it sounds like a nightmare that to make a new footprint of manufacturing equipment every single time they want to make a new molecule. That's stupid, yeah. But on the other hand, there is this uh, opportunity of 
this is a biomanufacturing is a technology that has been always confined to to really uh, particular specific places in the world, right? And that's because mainly because of the infrastructure that is required to go through this kind of uh, manufacturing process. If we can create a technology that behaves equally in high volumes and in slow, low volumes, all of a sudden there is a venue of innovation from highly trained and skilled groups that can develop knowledge and can develop technology, but can now be implemented in a decentralized manner. Without the ma mm -hmm. massive manufacturing facility. Yes. So now you can ship this to the places in the still the developing world where mm -hmm. they can make whatever biomolecules they need. Okay, so which ones did we say are the most commonly used that you think are going to be most commonly used mm -hmm. of biomolecules? What made? Which yeah, ones I think, think that in the beginning, as every technology that is new and that it is can uh, it will be acquired for people that has really specific needs for for manufacturing high value and low scale molecules for example and that's where we see the first adoption uh, then there are other places when we see that there's problems when it comes to biomanufacturing and for example this can sound controversial but the one of the a big constraint to bring novel te novel uses of biology to the industry, it is biomanufacturing, and it's also the fact that the people that has the infrastructure to implement it don't know anything about biomanufacturing. Mm -hmm. Let's say a farm, mm -hmm. a, a farm that uh, every year they use this biostimulants to increase their crops. They know how to use the product. They understand the value in the product but they don't have the facilities to manufacture that product. Yes. So let's say that uh, instead of having one big company is manufacturing all the biostimulants mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. uh, they can sell the information that is required to manufacture that product on site. Locally, yeah. And so that today won't happen because uh, the, the people that would be in charge on, on manufacturing that product, they don't have neither the tools, ni the skills or the training to do mm -hmm. it. But if we absorb that complexity and we yeah. put it inside a machine yeah. that can, uh, up, they can read that information, that language of manufacturing, and replicate it in a decentralized way, that, that's really convenient for all the parties involved because the, the, company, the company that has developed the product that it had to endure with the complexities and the logistics of manufacturing a product for the entire world but they will get paid for the knowledge that they have created. And on the other hand, the consumer... It's like a marketplace yeah. for the knowledge of how you turn a microorganism mm. into a specific biomolecule, mm. produce the biomolecule. Yes. So then that marketplace, people mm. can just go and download that information, mm. upload it into the STEM system. Okay, cool. And by doing that, you are multiplying the amount of people that are, that are actually thinking about using biology or using biomolecules to solve problems, right? Yeah. Because that's something for me that is central of the conversation. If, if, if more people know about the capabilities of the technology and how it works, they can see it as a way of solving problems in nearby. And that is only, so far it's been only, um, I don't know how to say it, but it's only been possible for a really small group of people that has, has the privilege of being working in one of these facilities. Yeah. So by putting this technology in, 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 in more people's minds, not only in their hands, uh, we see a ripple effect of how we interact with biology as a way to solving real day problems. And I, I think that's really powerful. Um, yeah. yeah, getting it in the hands of more people and also making a, a process that can, you're, you're building the future of the process. You're not just making one tiny addition, you're completely changing the way that we do this process in a more efficient way. I love, I love that. Okay, um, there's probably something else that's important to touch here that I think uh, that you guys can explain. Um, what does the, what is what is the recombinant protein uh, monoclonal? What does that mean, and how does that? What does that have to do with the? Is that does that have to do with the process of the microorganism making the biomolecule? 
Yes, it's, it's, a, it's different ways in which we use microorganisms to manufacture pharmaceutical products for treatment, right? Interesting. And so, so Interesting. then, so you have this okay. tier that has to do with molecules, particularly, and then other that has to do with cells, right? Mm -hmm. We we are we, we use the microorganisms to build more microorganisms that has the same capabilities. That could be seen, for example, in clean meat industry, in stem cells industry, in yeast, for example. We we didn't use the yeast to manufacture a molecule because we didn't do beer. If not, we would use that yeast to manufacture alcohol. But what we sell is was a number of cells. So our process was to take little cells, a, a really few number of cells, and take it to a large number of cells that would provide a service for the brewer that is actually transforming their malt into beer. So um, we you can what I'm trying to say here is that the value of these microorganisms can be tied to the function that they provide as a microorganism or to the molecule that they manufacture uh, as a product. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I think a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to follow. It's like, at times it's so hard when, you're, when I'm not you know, able mm -hmm. to fully grasp mm -hmm. everything. You're multiplying workers. It's like you, you, have, you have one worker that transforms sugar into alcohol but you need a lot of them in order to make a, a lot of beer. So the, you use biomanufacturing uh -huh. to increase the number of cells that will eventually transform that mud into alcohol. Yes. In the other cases, you have functional molecules that are proteins mainly that can target a specific uh, cell or um, in, I don't know, like block a, a compound that is bad for you. So basically, what you you use biomanufacturing to tell to to tell the, the cells and the microorganisms to manufacture that protein, and then afterwards you separate the microorganisms of the protein, and you purify that protein, and that is is the end product that ends up going to the market. Okay, okay, and then what does this look like in application in the pharmaceutical industry or in agriculture? Um, what do the applications look like? We've talked about it a little bit, mm -hmm. but give us some more. All right, so for anything that goes from medicines, uh, these are, the insulin is made this way, for example. Um, vaccines, treatment for stem cells, the personalized medicines where they're going to need your cells. This is all made this way. This yeah. all, everything is, is using these tools. Yes, right? using tools like yeah. this, yeah. And uh, so if we, if we need your cells to treat you, mm -hmm. we need a, a, a set of tools that are meant for the dosage that you require. Right? Is and this called molecular manufacturing? Is that what kind of the... Yeah, the, uh, yes. Yeah, like the insulin and... Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I would like to, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, is also, this also opens a, a new world of possibilities in terms of business. Um, because when it comes to big, like huge demands for a product, so there is a no-brainer, which is no problem. We go through uh, with building a $10 million facility so because the demand, it, it allows it, right? It makes it profitable. But when you come, like you were saying, with very small and specific demands, mm -hmm. there is not not a possibility but when you can build your own biotech facility for a small fraction of of the money you would mm -hmm. use to to build a traditional facility and that new facility it fits inside of a regular office yeah then the sky is the limit right yeah and i wouldn't i wouldn't m manufacture my own insulin probably i would let the main Mm. big dogs manufacture it, right? Because they have much larger... They, they, they already know. They are installed. They have other advantages that have to do yeah. with logistics, with regulations. Yeah. But um, going back to personalized medicine, yeah. for example, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 
I believe that it would be really important for hospitals to have tools that would allow them to treat patients uh, directly, right? And, and, and that's the leveraging this technology, uh, biomanufacturing, I mean. And if we can be part of that, that would be amazing. But today that, that won't happen because the, the logistic required to get a sample from you and take it to an uh, industry a facility that can manage it that way, it makes it too tedious or too expensive. So basically, the end up result is that we know how to cure you, but it's expensive, right? Uh, you have to be able to afford it. So, and that's that's not something that that's something that we can see today with novel therapies that are specifically expensive because of the the, the skilled labor that they are required and the facilities. To make a new facility for the new treatment, mm. the new personalized medicine, rather than be able to just compute the environment that it needs in order to make the treatment. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's like once you, once you have an understanding how, to, how you do it, you can replicate it in, in a decentralized manner. So yeah. there's always be this part of you developing the, the, proce the, the process and understanding how it works, but eventually the big, the big difference is how you create impact out of that knowledge. Uh, if you have to explain to each person and to each country that you're working with how you have to do it, or you have to explain it to a machine, right? And you know how to talk to that machine because you have created that language and, and, mm -hmm. and how a good process looks like to a machine. And then in egg, what is the agriculture? Yes, yeah, so, so we increasingly are using more microorganisms to control the, the environment that cells, that plants experience, and we use microorganisms also to promote growth yeah. and to provide capabilities to sustain drought uh, conditions. Yeah. yeah. So, um, hmm. and that's only going to get um, more demand for that. Yes, and, and, and more knowledge and more intensity on, on that mm -hmm. those areas. So, yeah, and there's other things that there's a lot of biological value in ag tech because there is where you have the plants, that's where you have the, the animals today. So there is a, a, a path to follow that is to rebuild the whole industry with, uh, with new and more efficient technologies. But the other side would be to leverage the current infrastructure in ag tech and to provide tools that would enable these high value technologies for cell based manufacture cell based meat for example to be performed in by the infrastructure that is currently there and there is a lot of value in that because yeah. you have local farmers that have a history uh, with their cattle and a history about interacting with the environment that they live in and there's a lot of knowledge, I'm, 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 to my opinion, really valuable knowledge and identity linked to uh, the, the rural way of living that could be preserved yeah. Yeah. If, if we have tools that enable them to be part of the transition towards a more sufficient technology, right? So that's part of also of, yes. of yes. the... Is the... I, I want to I wanna clarify this because I think this is important. Is the... Uh, when you have the different examples of either me purchasing the uh, the the actual um, micro uh, bioreactor from you, uh, or you adding the micro uh, bioreactor onto an existing bioreactor infrastructure, so you will do both. Do you think which one do you think you'll start with? Yeah, that's a difficult question. Yeah. Uh, we, we, are, we are having, we are interacting with clients and customers and, and potential partners to basically to hear uh, how they would use this technology. Uh, what we have found out is that even for big companies, building facilities is, is a problem. So that's something that we didn't knew before coming to San Francisco. We thought that uh, because of the high prices of some products, that's not so important in manufacturing. There is this belief that manufacturing doesn't add value, but actually adds a lot of constraint to the business model. Because someone could say it is already cheap, but the thing is, it's not cheap because you have to wait for years 
to build that manufacturing plant. And yeah, one yeah. that is built is there to stay. And, and, and yeah. it's not that you can, you can uh, shift that shift into, into some other right. direction. No, you're there, you do all the regulations, so you have to commit to that. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe someone would say that like, there's not, there's, it's not that expensive, but it is expensive for the decision making of uh, pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies in general. And now you can't afford to be, to have a narrower scope of decision making because the, ch the game is changing every year. New technologies are coming and, you, and that's where we believe that it's important to have a technology that is also dynamic. Totally. Yeah. What is the most common gas that is being added? Is it oxygen, carbon, mm -hmm. what's the? Yes, yeah, mainly CO2. Uh, oxygen, nitrogen, CO2. Oxygen, nitrogen, mm -hmm. CO2. Mm -hmm. And so then do, do you have then to have compressed oxygen, mm -hmm. nitrogen, CO2 to be able to add to the environment over time? Yeah, that, that's a good question. We, we work with really low pressures, uh, but one of the good things about our system is that we have a lot of surface of contact between the liquid and the gas uh, phase. So um, we, we can provide a really good exchange of gas into the media than working with high pressures. That, 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 that's a, that is something that doesn't happen in the current industry. Basically, you have lots of pressure building up inside the bioreactor. Uh, you have really high shear forces uh, as a side product of the propeller going at 30,000 RPMs. Um, and you have a community of cells that are untraceable. And that's a problem because you have a community that you don't know how long have they been there. If you work with a continuous or semi-continuous approach, uh, some cells will leave the system, but there are others that will stay inside. And you don't know how long a cell has been there. And that is detrimental for the production. So having a, an unidirectional path allows you to know the life, the work life of that cell, and when do you want that cells to go out from the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. even if there's a lot of work to be done in that area, that kind of capability is something that today you cannot control. You, there's no trace of cells. So being able to do that opens up a world of new possibilities when it comes to biomanufacturing yep. and how to create new ways of using cells to pro manufacture products. Yep. This is so amazing. Like it's, very, it's very unique. I love it. I love it. And we love it too. <laughs> yeah. And it's good because, like I was saying earlier, it's not just an addition. This is a completely new way of thinking about things with mm -hmm. microfluidics, robotics. It's very interesting. Um, is there something that we didn't cover that we should mention? Mm. Um, that we want our technology to be used. And we, we truly believe that that is a real need for this. Um, and we, we would like also to hear what someone that could be looking at this might think about our approach. We, we are open for every insight and applications or improvements. Uh, we approach this problem willing to solve it. So we can use all the help that is available. And we are open in this conversation. It's not like- Are you staying in the San Francisco Bay Area? Yeah. Yeah. Good, mm -hmm. good. Yeah, we're, we just opened an operation here in, in San Francisco, in the Bay Area. And although we have our alpha test all booked up um, after Demo Day, um, so many startups uh, approach us that we are considering opening it up again and, and maybe doing a, a, a larger alpha testing. So, yeah, awesome. everyone watching just we are super approachable we yeah. just uh you can shoot us an email and we'll be in touch yeah um awesome so that was that was very good so we have a lot to learn about the way that um, we can manufacture specific molecules and actually really tap into the uh, the very ch of changing the variables in the environment so that we can optimize the production. This is brilliant. I love it. Good job, guys.
Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks for, thanks for joining us on the okay. show. That was a lot of fun, and it was really <laughs> fun to learn about that. Um, everyone that was watching, definitely check them out. STEM.bio, S-T-A-M-M dot B-I-O, links in the bio. Also, um, give the comment below, let us know your thoughts about the, about the process, and also about uh, ways that you think it can maybe be augmented over time. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Peace.